It's 6.39 p.m. June 29th, 2023. This is a regular meeting of the Guam Public Utilities Commission. All commissioners are present with the exception of Mr. Guerrero and Mrs. Perez Camacho. First order of business is approval of the minutes of June 5th, 2023. Motion to approve subject to corrections. All in favor say aye. Aye. The motion carries. And we just have one item this evening. PWA docket 2307, petition to approve the procurement for design, design construction and project construction management for GWA sewage pump stations and force main rehabilitation and replacements. We have a PUC council report and a proposed order. Anthony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Pangolinan. Mr. Pangolinan is excused from this matter. Anthony. Yes, so uh, by way of background, um, GWA relies on its 82 sewage pumps, uh, pump stations and about 43 miles of Forest Main provide the wastewater services to approximately uh, its 30,000 uh, customers. Um, so the US EPA uh, is requiring GWA to address uh, current and potential operational, structural, and safety deficiencies in GWA sewage pumping stations and uh, force mains uh, in a very aggressive time frame to comply with the clean, uh, Federal Clean Water Act. Uh, further, on May the 30th of 2023, uh, uh, the Guam Consolidated Commission on uh, Utilities uh, basically did issue uh, resolution number 30-fiscal uh, year 2023, uh, finding that the procurement of the engineering construction and project construction management services uh, uh, for the sewage pumping stations and force mains was authorized, uh, and it also authorized GWA's management uh, to petition uh, PUC uh, to authorize GWA to issue a solicitation for the services. We don't have a contract. This is just to approve them putting out a solicitation uh, for these services. So uh, in my analysis, I basically found uh, that uh, uh, GWA is required uh, to essentially uh, uh, put these services out to bid uh, because the uh, under the contract review protocol for GWA, uh, the PUC approves contracts or solicitations above one million here. Uh, GWA has estimated that the cost of the engineering services will be approximately $45.4 million to rehabilitate the 82 sewage pumping stations. And they just gave a range uh, between uh, $17.3 million uh, to $116.4 million uh, to rehabilitate uh, or replace the uh, force mains. Uh, further, uh, the other reason why this uh, uh, review is required uh, is because uh, any financial obligation that involves use of bond funds by GWA uh, has to be reviewed by the PUC. Here, uh, GWA plans to uh, pay uh, for these engineering services uh, with the combination of uh, bond funding as well as federal grant funding. So in looking at uh, their actual request, uh, although it's very high, GPA's estimated cost of the engineering services is reasonable. Uh, basically, uh, where does it come up with its uh, cost estimate? Well, uh, GWA uses 2018 Water Resources Master Plan Update, uh, which kind of gave the uh, number of 554,000 to rehabilitate a single sewage pumping station. Uh, extrapolating this amount and applying it to the 82 sewage pumping stations, basically simple math, 554k per sewage pumping station uh, multiplied by 82 sewage pumping stations. Uh, that's where they get the 45 million, uh, 428, uh, 45.4 million uh, figure. Uh, and uh, they also get the uh, uh, that range, 17.3 million to 116.4 million to rehabilitate uh, Chile Goyce Force Mains uh, from that uh, 2018 Water Resources Master Plan. So based on that, I find that uh, the estimated costs are uh, reasonable. Uh, further, uh, and I do have to warn the uh, PUC as well, uh, even GWA in its petition uh, states that uh, that was in 2018 that these costs were based. Uh, the way construction is today, it's likely going to cost a little more, especially with the competition for these services caused by the military to build them. So 
I also found the GWA solicitation for the engineering services uh, is prudent. Uh, so essentially, uh, this is not the normal run-of-the-mill uh, IFV uh, invitation for bids. Uh, what we're really asking here is for a uh, uh, to issue uh, <clears throat> what's known as an IDIQ uh, bid. Uh, that's an indefinite quantity, or excuse me, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity contract. And uh, this type of contract uh, is allowed pursuant to 2 GAR Division 4 subsec or Section 3119 subsection I2. So it is permitted uh, by Guam procurement law. Um, further, uh, this type of contract I found to be appropriate uh, because GWA will be relying on bond funding, but uh, it's not very clear. I guess they're hoping to apply for grant funding or they might not have all the funding. So uh, GWA might not receive all of this funding at once to cover the entire cost of rehabilitating uh, the sewage pumping stations and forcemates, hence the indefinite delivery. Uh, additionally, um, we don't really know how much the rehabilitation will cost for sewage pumping stations or the, uh, uh, the, uh, the force mains, so hence the indefinite quantity. Uh, finally, um, in terms of uh, restrictions, uh, GWA can only use this type of uh, contract twice per fiscal year for a supplier service. I did uh, contact GWA to confirm that this will be the first indefinite uh, delivery indefinite quantity engineering services contract they are soliciting for this particular fiscal year. So hence, it is authorized. Um, I also found that uh, uh, the solicitation is necessary. So we've already stated how GWA relies on this infrastructure to provide wastewater services. Um, and uh, it's important to note here that most of GWA's force mains were constructed from the 1960s uh, to the 1990s. And they commonly featured uh, force mains construction, uh, constructed of asbestos cement pipes, which definitely uh, uh, would need to be replaced by now. Um, basically, uh, all, this, uh, all these pumping stations and the force mains are in serious need of repair, rehabilitation, uh, and replacement. Uh, finally, uh, it's necessary because US EPA is requiring it. If uh, we are in violation, it's found that we're in violation of the Federal Clean Water Act, uh, GWA could incur a fine per violation per day, uh, which might be quite uh, costly. So, uh, based on that, I uh, find that uh, GWA's request to issue a solicitation uh, for these services is reasonable, prudent, and necessary. I recommend uh, that the PUC approve the solicitation, and uh, I've uh, provided a proposed order uh, for that. In that proposed order, uh, I also, because this is an indefinite uh, supply or IDIQ contract, I basically uh, said yes, issue the, uh, you know, if you approve this, what you would be approving is the issuance of the solicitation, but any contract arising from that IDIQ contract uh, would have to be brought back to the PUC for approval. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, Miguel, any comments? Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, the only uh, comment that I would add is these uh, the services that are anticipated to be conducted under these IDIQ contracts would be for uh, regulatory, to get out in front of regulatory enforcement actions. And I'm speaking specifically about the consent decree that's being negotiated right now. So um, whether or not we uh, enter into that agreement, these are still items that will need to be um, projects that will need to be undertaken and completed. Uh, otherwise, we would face uh, fines and penalties that Mr. Camacho uh, referred to, uh, if not in a negotiated consent decree in a uh, lawsuit in court. So it is important we are trying to stay out in front of it, and that's the reason why it's before you today. Any ideas on your part how much more that this would cost us from the 2018 estimates? At this point, we go. Uh, rough percentages. I think we're looking upwards of 30 or 40 percent. Now, the old uh, asbestos uh, cement pipes. Do they 
simply leave them in the ground, just crush them, and then you lay a new pipe on pipe, or what do you do? That'll be something that the engineers determine under this. Our preference would be um, for us to either use, my preference would be either use a uh, pipe bursting technology that where you pull a new line through the old line with a shattering head mm -hmm. and it hooks it up but leaves it in place undisturbed. If it's undisturbed then that's the, the most cost efficient because we won't have to deal with the disposal issue. Uh, if we did a um, dig, trench, cut it out and replace it. Thank you. Any comments from anybody else? Go ahead, Doris. Yeah, Anthony did answer my question because my first comment here was how much. So this is just including the solicitation and then once you get that, once you have the information, that's when a contract for to award will come forward. Is that correct? That's correct. And then, um, it's, it's probably going to be north of 45 or 12. So is your plan to give it to one contractor or to give it to several contractors? And do you have certain areas that are in need of uh, re rehabilitation first? In other words, there's certain ones that you have to do first, you know, you know your top 10 or top 20. So what we are working on now um, with US EPA incorporates certain time timelines and a certain uh, for example, certain number of pump stations that have to be completed within that certain time frame. Okay. So the plan is to issue um, IDIQ contracts to the engineering design firms for the work that would be required. More than likely, um, the work on the pump stations will require multidisciplinary teams, meaning different types of engineers, including mechanical and electrical, to have the equipment, whereas on the force main side, it would likely require only one type of engineer, so we anticipate that there might be interest in separating them out that way. And then within each category of project type or infrastructure type, the number of firms that it would be awarded to would be dependent on what workload they could do in order to meet any negotiated time frame. So we haven't arrived at the number, but the plan is to do it as efficiently as possible in order to make sure we meet any established deadlines so that we avoid fines and penalties. And how much money do you have set aside from the bonds uh, approximately for this? Because you said it's a combination. So and whose money will be used first, the bonds or federal grants? If we are allowed to use federal grants on these projects, we would maximize that amount. Um, the, the amount that we had set aside under the bonds, if I remember correctly, was around uh, 50 or so million dollars um, from our last bond issuance. Unfortunately, I think we have reallocated some of that in order to, because of the uh, aforementioned increase in cost of construction, our current court order tank projects uh, are costing us also more than we anticipated, so we had to shuffle some money in order to take care of those because those are higher on the priority list as we already have a court order, but we don't yet have a negotiated consent decree. So we had about 50. I don't think we have all of that remaining, uh, but whatever we do have would be put towards um, first the design and then the construction. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, thank you. Thanks uh, for getting all our water back online quickly. Um, uh, I just had a couple of questions on the, um, the 45 million. Is that, uh, this is for engineering design or is this for the actual construction and all that at the end of the day? Are we just paying for services first and then construction costs? So the, I, what we're asking for the authority to procure is only for the, con the design part first. And that's the 45 million? No, no. Okay. Those numbers uh, relate to the estimated construction costs. Oh, for the overall? Oh, for the overall from, okay. the, from the water resource master plan. Okay. And I think your 40% more is probably more accurate because this is pre-pandemic pricing 2018, right? So after all the supply chain issues, everything almost doubled. So we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Good, thanks. I think then uh, Commissioner Chris asked all the other questions I needed to know. Thank you. Yeah,
Sorry, for the for the um, design, it would be multiple companies. When we put it out for bid for construction, um, that would be a different procurement. We'd come back and, and get approval to do that. We anticipate each of those would be over a million as well. And just okay. a point of uh, clarification on this particular order. Is this supposed to be a GPA docket 2307 or GWA docket 2307? It's supposed to be GWA docket. If it says GPA, that is type right. Type on, okay. So I'll motion to approve GPA, GWA docket 2307. Oh, the docket is Okay. Just on the actual order. We're going to say. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Unanimous. Thanks, Miguel. Thank you, Miguel. Next item is uh, administrative matters. GPA filing of the second quarter report on revenue bond usages. GPA dockets 1001 and 1409, and it's for informational purposes only. Fred. The reason I included this is because I just want to give you an idea. Actually, both GPA and GWA, they all have the final reports in different dockets. And these are a couple of the dockets. There are the you know, reports on uh, bond usage, uh, the revenue of bond usages, and then the, the other one, the reliability report. And these are uh, the reliability reports of the final quarter. And I just wanted to give you a feeling of the kind of things we get on an ongoing basis. The, the bond report is pretty self-explanatory. It talks about the 2010 and 2014 GPA bonds and the amounts that have been extended. Um, the other quarter on reliability, I, mean, I was going to tell you something about safety, safety, and aid. Each time I look at those, I have to I must read again what they are and how they're talking. I think rather than I give any explanation at this point, at some point we should have someone from GPA. Um, Melinda Moffin is usually quite good at explaining each term, how it's calculated, and what it means. Probably somebody in the campus is on who give us a good explanation with further interest. I did look them up and I, I wrote some definitions there. But I think it would take a while. Melinda's not on the it's Jennifer Gilbert. Uh, I, I heard formally that Jennifer is going to be acting on assistant general manager of operations. So she, she is a little bit of 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 a little bit Energy mitigation, thirty-six million dollars. What is that? Yeah, I, I think that's for the, um, you know, the two energy storage Those projects, the two batteries. Yeah, the so, yeah. You know, it, it was a total of forty. Oh yeah, forty million. Yeah, the, the, these batteries, the battery oh, storage. Okay. That's what I wanted. I'm more interested in the. Reliability and sustainability for the next quarter, which is the fall. Yes. So yes, let's that know that. So maybe at that, we should yeah. get a, a, the next quarterly report that we're yeah. looking at some of the yes, because really go over this. I have to yes. uh, gone over the number of times. I think I understand it, and then the next time I've forgotten. It's, it's not easy. Okay, and the next item is GPA filing and quarterly reliability report, GPA docket 1313. This is for informational purposes. And, and I would cover that. All right. Safety, safety. Okay. And that's the one I'm interested in the next quarter because that's where John O'Reilly was. Here, what happened? Sorry. Because people were, I keep on hearing people were there. You know, it's only a little over 90% right now. People are going on. They, they've recovered pretty well in Denado and Gigo from where it was at just a week or so ago. They've got their numbers up pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the 
Uh, Jenida was up around 95% almost now. And uh, Gigo, I think, is about 84, 85. I have a question about the background form. They have come to assist on, on uh, do you remember from Hong Kong? 89 days before they got power. It was about 90 days. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 they have a sign every day to change the and up in my neighborhood on Turner Road, they've almost connected the pipeline now. They've been working from the top and they've been working from the bottom. They're still not on the new side. Yeah, but they're laying, they're laying all the pipes now, and I think in the next couple of working days, they'll probably have the whole trench done. Oh. Yeah, once they started operations again after the uh, typhoon, they really have been working pretty fast up there. Okay, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Okay. That's my order. Thank you.